Welcome to Unscripted Coding. Today we're going to run Tavily AI. Tavily provides an API that connects your LLMs to the internet. It uh, allows you to search the internet, basically. Now, I know that's hard to understand, but if you think back uh, about a year ago to ChatGPT when it just came out, it was really, really exciting. But there was that pesky, I, I think 2022 cutoff point for knowledge. So yeah, you can ask about the, the history of Great Britain, but, but you couldn't ask what is happening in US politics today because it, it, it just didn't connect to the internet. It was really good for writing emails, writing stories, but it, it just didn't have that capability of telling you what is happening minute by minute off the internet right now. But if you think about ChatGPT Plus right now, it has the browse with Bing feature where it connects the LLM to the internet. If you ask it to write a fictional story, it's just going to access the LLM and, and move on. But if you then ask it for the latest news from the US, it's going to then uh, make that conscious effort, um, call a function to connect with Bing, to get a bunch of uh, related articles, go through it, summarize it, and then provide you an answer. So that is a big, big capability because suddenly it opens so many doors for you to start building up-to-date news um, to, to research topics, to access more niche information, to direct your searches in a certain way. Really, well, really pretty important. And so the reason I'm doing this today is because I was looking at the assistance API from OpenAI. It promises the latest features from ChatGPT for developers. Um, through an API. And so previously you had this text generation that's like the old chat GPT with limited features and then assistance API is supposed to bring all these new features over. But if you look at the tools, they give you code interpreter, which is huge being able to run code, uh, knowledge retrieval, which is uh, a local set of documents you can, you can retrieve and, and understand, and function calling. Nothing technically like Browse with Bing. Now, Tavily taps into this function calling feature. Basically, function calling allows you to call specific functions to specific endpoints on the internet, but it's not like Browse with, well, maybe it is like Browse with Bing, but it doesn't give you that flexibility to just go anywhere on the internet without some, you know, building your own backend. So it's it's difficult and, and I was quite disappointed because somewhere in my mind I was thinking assistance API will suddenly enable internet searches. And so I found Tavly AI. I went through the internet, uh, searched, saw lots of other disappointed people, but found this really useful thread from OpenAI. And I'm going to give credit where it is due, right here. This is the code we're looking at, and it's from INSINZ, I-N-S-X-I-N-Z. And we might even take a look at RS Bear's modification that uses Azure instead of Tavily. But um, basically, I, I took this code, I threw it into VS Code here, and we're going to talk through how this works. Now, the only modification I did was pull out the API keys so you guys can't see it. Um, and what I wanted to show you first is that it works. So when you run it, it's all in the command line. We're using the assistance API and I can have a conversation. Hi, how are you? And it's going to take a second to 
uh, run it and then you get your response. Hello, I'm an AI, so I don't have feelings, blah, blah, blah. Uh, it didn't need to connect to the internet to make up that answer. On the other hand, if I say, what happened today in world news? Please summarize the biggest story you can find. Okay, and now it's going to take a little bit longer, but you'll see that it, it, it uh, started this run, and then suddenly it realizes it requires some sort of action, and it needs to do something. And now, after a bit more time, um, it responded. The biggest story in world news today is, uh, well, of course, the ongoing conflict between Israel and Hamas. Um, mm, I probably wanted more detail here. Uh, can you give me more details about what happened specifically today? So let's see. Uh, this is all true, and it probably picked up a... Um, an article that, that gives that basic background. I was hoping for something a little more specific, but let's move this to a side. That's just an interesting piece. Let's look at what's happening here. And so um, we have our imports. Uh, we, most importantly, we have OpenAI and Tavli. So uh, on the Python side, you need both of these SDKs to make your life a little bit easier. I'm sure you can call their API through um, uh, through basic calls, but let's use their SDKs. Um, you're a finance expert. So I guess this one was geared towards um, maybe stock information, maybe finance information, but whatever. Uh, there's a basic prompt to tell it what its main objective is. Then it looks like there's a couple of support functions. So I'll come back to those. And then, and then here, this code just runs without further prompting. So um, without further kind of functions wrapping around it. Um, so it does use the assistance API and it creates an assistant and if you've used Assistance API, uh, you create an assistant, you create a run, and then you kind of add messages to it, and it kind of hands you responses when it's ready. So in this case, uh, you create the assistant first, you tell it who it is, uh, pick out the model, but most importantly, it has this tool. So this function will get triggered when the AI thinks it should get triggered. And in this case, the description is you need recent events from the web. Uh, then, then you hand it a, a string query of what is it you're looking for. So in this case, when the AI feels like it, it can call this one function and then it connects to the internet. Or actually, rather, it calls a function up here, which then connects to the internet. Okay, and then we get you know an assistant we create a thread, and then um, that thread will be ongoing until we exit. So in this case, um, you, you start having that conversation, you enter a message, you add it to the thread. So there's a thread, and then you start adding messages. And then um, when you've added a couple messages, so this the reason it's set up this way is because you might put two or three messages in a row, you might add information, you might have a text message, then uh, a photo before you start running and asking for a response. So then that's where the run comes in. And finally, you wait for the run to complete. Now, what's interesting is that if the status says required requires action, that's when it goes up to those helper functions. And then finally, at the very end, um, you, you print all the messages out. So um, when it requires an action, 
we saw earlier on, if it doesn't require an action, it's just going to print the message. So if I said hi and it says hi back, it doesn't need anything. But as soon as I engage and it figures out it needs to run that Cavalry search, we're going to call submit tools out, submit tool outputs, and then wait for run completion. So let's come back up here. Submit tool outputs. So we pass to it the thread and run and then tools to call. And what was that one? Mm, tools output, tools to call. I'm not sure what that is. So let's see. I'll put array and then for each tool, there we go. So uh, I think we're getting it from the run status or, or the run itself as to what function it wants to call. And in this case, um, we only gave it one function, which is a tably search. But in theory, we can have, you know, Azure search, we can have, you know, weather report, we can have, uh, you know, call Domino's pizza, we can have a dozen functions. And this is just saying which which things did it want us to call? And in this case, it wanted, it'll go through the list of tools and there's only one option, which is the tably search. And now that it matches, it's going to uh, run that tably search. And all that does is connect to the client. So the SDK handles everything and you're going to get a query. Um, you're going to search, get a result back you get the output and then you, you, you append it to the tools and then you return it. Um, and then you just wait for it to run. Uh, you're just going to hand it the, well, through here, you're going to hand it the output and then you're going to continue running that conversation until it is happy. So first of all, it got all that data from Tavli about what is happening, where are the important articles, whatever, and then it's going to then parse and do whatever it can to get an output for you. And finally, it's going to print the messages out. So um, let's come back here and, and see. Today, specifically, the situation remains tense. A noteworthy event is the killing of a senior commander of the militant group Hezbollah, uh, which is all true. This is all um, true. This is the biggest story. <clears throat> uh, not necessarily today. This might have been a day or two ago, but um, I think that's accurate. And then you can start tweaking the Tavli client so that you look at more results. You get different types of search. And of course, you can also uh, tweak the query a little bit. I think this is surprising. It's surprising because this worked um, so easily. So uh, I'm, I'm very thankful for INS sins because that means I didn't have to put all this together, but it seems fairly simple. So uh, this whole creating assistance, this is basically boilerplate um, uh, code that you can pull straight out of um, OpenAI's documentation. The only thing here is that when it requires an action, then you're going to call these things. So um, these few things are the ones that uh, was written. Uh, I think even this one is probably fairly generic as well. And then all of this ties together very beautifully to, to get this working. Um, I'm not going to go into the Azure one. I don't think I need to. This worked well enough. I think if we tweak how this prompt instruction looks and also this example of a query, latest news on NVIDIA stock performance, if we can change that, then we're going to have something fairly useful. And so for me, I was hoping to, to really use this for research, but um, instead of trying to create something from scratch, I should point out that Tavli AI has this research assistant built right in. And so you can start asking, 
guess a lot of people are interested in NVIDIA, but you can ask it directly right here and you'll need an open AI key as well uh, to, to get this running. But uh, you didn't have to reinvent the wheel, but the reason I wanted this is because you could start expanding this quite a bit. Uh, if I put some heavier scripting on the prompts and then uh, have it run specific steps afterwards, I can make this so that um, it does multiple steps. So I will first ask it to find the latest information and then say, turn it into a podcast script, fluff it out, check for grammar, whatever, um, prepare slides for it, prepare notes for it. Um, and so you can take multiple steps to further make this uh, an automation solution. Um, pretty cool. I'm pretty excited. The other alternative I should mention is you could potentially use uh, GPTs for it. So OpenAI allows you to customize uh, GPTs and we've done videos on that. That definitely has the browse with Bing built in um, as well. And so you can have it, you can build on top of that as a solution. But I like this one because uh, you don't necessarily need to use OpenAI. You can use other LLMs as well. Um, we'll see how it goes. I, I think this is a simple, elegant solution that we can build on top of. So next week, uh, we will have another project. So please subscribe, please watch our other videos, and I will see you next week. Thanks for watching.